Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Another magnificent day. You know, the Bible says, love the moment. Are you loving the moment? Yeah. In fact, the taxi driver, Lewis, said to me this morning, don't you miss home? I said, I'll love the moment. <laughs> and that's the best way to do it, is you just love the moment. Love where you are, love who you are, love, love what you have, love the moment, because you're never going to get this moment again. Amen. So love it and appreciate it and get the most out of it. When you do that, future worries don't seem so troublesome and past pain fades. Doesn't that sound good? When you love the moment. But the title of the class this morning is Fantastic Facts. Because what have we been told about facts? Yeah. Only enemy number one. Verse 5, it says, Put not your trust in princes. Neither in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Who are the princes? <laughs> they are the authorities. They are. They're the authorities. So this is Bible language. That's the authorities. Now, some of them are truthful. And I think that most people are ethical, but I know the pharmaceutics who aren't as much. And it's like one, one Time magazine that said, new cancer cure, 50% cure. And then you read the fine details right at the end. Do you notice that the fine print in the last chapter? Uh, two people were tested and one died. <laughs> well, it is 50%. So, so you have to look at all things. It's all things. Everything's relative. So it's investigating and having a look at that. But look at what it says. That's uh, verse 3 and verse 5. It says, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob as his help whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven, earth, sea, and all the very knees, that keeps truth forever. And that's what we're interested in here, yeah. is truth, because there is a truth. So today I'm going to go into the molecular structure of fats. Now don't get scared, I'm not great at chemistry. When I had to do my chemistry part of my nutrition course, I went to stay with my sister, who is a chemistry teacher, for five days. <laughs> I didn't want her to do it for me. I wanted her to show me how to do it. And <clears throat> I got through it, but uh, yeah, I find that one a little difficult. But this one I'm going to make it very easy to understand. If I can understand it, you can understand it. Because when you understand the basic structure of the facts, then you start to know how the body uses it, where the body uses it and why the body uses it. Remember the Proverbs 16, oh, sorry, Proverbs 14 verse 6 says, knowledge is easy to even and understand. So I want to give you an understanding of the basic structure of the facts. And what I've, what I've drawn up there is an 18 chain fatty acid. And that 18 chain fatty acid I have drawn here and it's the 18 chain fatty acid that is found in flaxseed. And chia seed as well. And both of these are high in omega 3. And we've heard of omega 3. We've all heard of omega 3. We're told that it's an essential fatty acid. And whenever you see the word essential, what that means is the body doesn't make it, so you have to put it in. In fact, no creature can make omega-3. No creature can put that into their fatty acid chain, only plants can. What are we told is a high source? Fish oil, is that right? Mm -hmm. But fish can't put omega-3 into their fatty acid chain, so how will that, how come they're high? They eat a one-celled algae that's high. Well, the good news is we don't have to eat the one-celled algae. One of the problems with the oceans today, they're not a very safe place. There's a lot of rubbish, a lot of mm. call it trash, a lot of um, outputs from factories that are being dumped into the waterways and into the seas. So a lot of what comes out of the sea is not that healthy today. I've got a friend and, and he, he sails yachts. And he said, you wouldn't believe some of the rubbish that you see in the sea. Especially sometimes there's whirlpools. He said, it's unbelievable. And of course, there's a lot of campaigns to try and get plastics out of the islands because they're finding fish and turtles wrapped up in these plastics. 
Hmm. Humanity has not a good job of a plan, have they? Mm -hmm. no. I'm so glad that the Bible says the day is coming when God will make a new heaven. <laughs> Because this earth is just about full, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm so glad, as you saw in the little lecture, that we live in a body that has the ability to detoxify it, has the ability to function. And, and that's good news. But let's get back to facts. So the 18-chain the fatty acid that makes up omega-3, there are 19 trillion in one drop of oil. So that's the magnification we're looking at. But when you understand this basic fatty acid chain, we start to understand how the body uses this oil, where and why the body uses it. So you'll notice that there are hydrogen, see the H, there are hydrogen atoms either side, and they're all linked together with a carbon atom. And what the three means is that the third carbon atom, so one, two, three, at the third carbon atom there's a double bond. So instead of one link, there's two links. And whenever you get a double bond, the hydrogen atoms above disappear, and the hydrogen atoms underneath, they develop an electromagnetic field between them. And what this means is that now there's a kink. There's a kink in the chain. And that kink is caused by the two hydrogen atoms underneath the double bond repelling each other. In and three, there are three double bonds. So that means there's two more in this chain. So one, two, three, another one there, one, two, three, another one there. So these hydrogen atoms are gone. And the hydrogen atoms underneath develop an electromagnetic field between each other. So now we've got three kinks in the fatty acid chain. Now what that does, it's caused a very thin oil, it's very fluid oil, because of the three double bonds. So this oil is called a poly, poly meaning more than one double bond. It's unsaturated. Why does it say it's saturated? Because if, if, if there were hydrogen atoms all along here, it would be saturated. But unsaturated means that there are some empty spots on the fatty acid chain. Many people use that word polyunsaturated, but they don't know what it means. But when you have a look at what it means, that it has three bonds, then you start to understand why it's called the polyunsaturated. So let's have a look at the effect of double bonds on the body. So the double bonds, these three structures here, they create an electromagnetic field between them. And that's important for us because we are electrical people. There's a spark of electricity in every cell. And our electrical system predominantly is our nervous system. And our brain has one trillion nerve cells in there. And Dr. Neil Nedley, in his book, Pressed a Way Out, he spends a whole chapter on omega-3 and how important it is for brain function. And I think God's got a sense of humour because the nut, it looks like the brain, is the highest in omega-3. Now the flaxseed and the chia, they're the highest sources. They're higher than the walnut. But in the nut department, the walnut is the highest of all other nuts. So if you're going to have an exam, the meal before your exam, you have, have about eight to ten walnuts. So your double bonds, um, they ensure our electromagnetic field is working well. Double bonds were also light sensitive. That means the light is attracted into these double bonds. The heat is also attracted into the double bonds. And those double bonds, they act like a magnet to oxygen. Do you know what that means? <laughs> that means that when we eat this food, our electromagnetic field is going to be working very well. We're going to be absorbing more light, more vitamin D. We're going to be able to manage our heat better in our body. 
and we're going to be absorbing more oxygen. Oxygen, the most vital element needed for life. What an embracing oil. No wonder there's a lot of hoopla around the omega-3. And it's granted. Can you see why this is such an incredible oil? But if you grind that seed and let it sit in a bowl, the light, heat and oxygen are attracted into those empty spots above the double bonds. And so we want in one hour of grinding that that oil has become rancid. Oh wow. Can you see why? Because of the double bonds. That's why if you buy flax oil, it should be bought in a dark bottle and in a fridge. It should be right away from exposure to light, heat and oxygen. <laughs> and yet you can buy ground flaxseed in a shop, can't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't touch it. <laughs> if you just bought some and it's at home, I'm just bring it compost beer. <laughs> so even though it's the most incredible oil, it's the most volatile oh. because of those three other ones. And what about the chia seeds? If they're in its sea, um, they're safe. It's only when you grind it over. Because when <clears throat> it's safe in the sea, that a lot of people don't want, like walnuts because they're bitter. Well, they should never be bitter. If they're bitter, it's because they're being exposed. That's why I don't buy broken walnuts. They're the cheapest ones, of course, but you'll find they're very bitter. And it's because the bitterness has exposed, it exposed those empty spots that are like heat and oxygen. But if you buy a whole water, you'll find they're not bitter. It's not until it's broken open that it gets exposed to the light, heat and oxygen. Explain so much. What about sunflower? Sunflower seed is high in omega-6. And what does the 6 mean? Well, omega-6 is also an amine chain fatty acid. So we're just going to do, a, do them all together here. And I'm going to do a good guess and hope that's I okay. So the 6 means that the first double bond is where the first double bond is. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At the 6 carbon atom, there's a double bond. And there are two double bonds in sunflower. So one, two, three, there's another one there. So you've got hydrogen atoms along here, here, hydrogen atoms along here, hydrogen atoms under here, and you've got two repelling actions. And because there's two repelling actions, you've got two kinks. So this oil is not as thin of oil, it's not as fluid an oil, but it's still a pretty fluid oil, because it's got two double ones. But the most is the flax seed or the chia. And that's why the English, they paint their cricket bats with linseed oil, linseed and flax seed, same thing, because it disperses so easily. So this is actually a great blood thinner because it's such a thin fluid oil. In fact, it's such an effective blood thinner, it can be taken if someone has a tumour. Because you take this oil, it helps to disperse tumours inside the body. Oh, how can that sound? No, no the, the really thin oil. Okay. The thinner the oil, the, the, the thinner it is. <laughs> What's the best way to take flaxseed? What's the best way to take flaxseed? I think the best way is to grind it up. There is a use for your coffee grinder. <laughs> grind it up and you put it on your breakfast and eat it okay, in the <clears throat> or soak the chia. Soaking the chia is probably the easiest way to take the chia. And a third of a cup or a quarter or more. Remember, I said shake, 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 shake. Do you want to do your shaking, shaking exercises? Were you saying that the flax and the was the one that um, the one? Okay, so I guess you tell you me tell which flax. is the thinnest oil. Flax. Why? That's what we're going Triple. Because it's got three double bonds. You see how thin it is? 
and the sunflower is almost as thin, but not as thin. So the sunflower is also called a poly, unsaturated poly, which means what? Many. More than one double bond. Unsaturated, why students? Because there's gaps in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because of the empty spots on the fatty acid chain. What about olive? Olive and almond. Olive and almond oil are high in omega 9. And what does the 9 mean? The 9 means the position on the fatty acid chain of the first double bond. Oh, no. Okay? 1, 2, <clears throat> one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's the first double bond. And there is one double bond in almond and olive. So you've got hydrogen atoms here, hydrogen atoms along here, hydrogen, hydrogen atoms along here, here, and there's a repelling action. action there. So one thing. So this oil is called a mono, or just mono. Why is it called mono? One double bond. Unsaturated because there is still an empty spot on the fatty acid chain. And that's why when you buy mm. olive oil, it should be first cold press, extra virgin. Because if it's, if it's extracted with heat, in fact, if any of these are extracted with heat, what happens to the double one? It's destroyed. And the oil is destroyed because those empty spots take the heat in. Mm. So first cold press, extra virgin olive in the dark world. What about coconut? Well, coconut is different. See, these are called three long chain fatty acids. But coconut, it contains medium and short chain fatty acids. So I'm going to put a thin chain here. There's 10 chains, and the 10 chain means short chain fatty acid. What's a medium chain fatty acid? A medium chain fatty acid would be 12, uh, 12 14, 16, whereas well, 18, 18 chain, 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 that's a long chain, long fatty, chain acid. fatty acid. Short chain, short chain would be 16. 16. 16. 16. And, and Every spot is full. No double bonds. And in the cold weather, it's solid. So what's the name of this? A saturated. It's called a saturated fat because every spot is full. It is saturated with hydrogen ions. So what's the best fat? Well, it depends what body function you're talking about because your body uses them all. And it uses them all for different functions. But before I show you how that happens, and we'll have a quick look at our gastrointestinal tract, first of all, I want to give you the omega-3 story. So the omega-3 found in flaxseed is called alpha linolenic acid. You may have heard of that name. So, Alpha linolenic acid, ALA to call it, it has three double bonds. So that's one, two, three. In the body, ALA, alpha linolenic acid, is converted to EBA, epicycionic acid, and that has five double bonds. So that's one, two, three, four. In the body, EPA is converted to DHA, decohexaonic acid. And it has six double bonds. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa, that's a very thin one. And it is DHA that is ex used exclusively for cell membrane function and repair. You can see why. Because we are circular people, aren't we? The only thing that's not circular, maybe, is our feedback flow. But we're circular people. Every cell is circular. 
and around every cell. It's not a wall, there's a membrane. And this DHA gives such a beautiful fluid membrane. When I used to do life bulb analysis, we look at the blood on the slide, and sometimes there'd be a really strange looking cell. And the guests would say, what's that? And we keep watching and then whoop, out it would come perfectly round. They just squish against something. Yeah? So when we heat up certain things, what happens to the olive oil or when the oil or clean? What happens is the heat is attracted into the empty spots and the oil becomes rancid. Mm. So when I use olive oil in cooking, I put it in just before I serve my dish. So when I when I well, how do I saute onions? I saute onions and I have very heavy bottomed saucepans. I like none of those thin nasty ones, very solid saucepans. I heat it up, I put it on a low heat, I put my onions in and I put the lid on. And the condensation drops down and they brown. One lady said, don't, don't you saute in water? That's boiling onions. How much flavour has that got? No, I, that's how I do it. But I have to keep my eye on it. If I put it up high, I just burn it. If I've got that nice penny bottom sauce, but cast iron's really good. And, and when I lift it up to have a look, the, drip, the water drips in it and it's starting to go nice and brown. Nice and brown. Then you get that beautiful flavour. And then, when it's starting to stick a little bit more, I put the onions in, or I put the zucchini or the cabbage in, you know, vegetables where the water comes out. When you put water in, you start to lose your flavour. And that's how I do it. And when the, when the tomato is starting to come out, and it's fairly juicy, and when that tomato juice hits that stick from sautéing the brown onions, can you imagine the flavour? Yeah. I mean, God gave us taste buds for a reason, isn't it, Drew? How often it's the food tastes fantastic that it's killing you, or it's really healthy for you, but it's totally tasty. <laughs> so it should taste fantastic. And when the water starts to come out and the, you know, all the juice in the tomatoes, I put it in a very low heat, and then I put the oil in. And that, that fluid in there stops that oil going to a very high temperature. And that's traditionally how the Europeans always make their tomato sauces. Because they always have beautiful tomato sauces that have got a nice amount of olive oil. Most people are shocked at how much olive oil I use. But remember, fat doesn't make fat. And I don't drink a cup of day. I don't even drink half a cup of day. I have a little bit. Yes? Um, when it comes to fractionated coconut oil, do you find that that's not like as effective as regular? Well, the fractionated coconut oil, I always wonder what they've done to it. That's what I was thinking. Ah. <laughs> I'm always a bit concerned when they change things. And that's exactly what they did to the margarine. And as when we look at heart health, I think we're looking at that tomorrow. Um, I'll, I'll show you how. The monitoring was introduced to reduce heart disease. I've got a question, has it? No. <laughs> Not at all. Well, what's the definition of exactly? No, no, no. It hasn't reduced heart disease at all. But you know what has arisen since monitoring is being used is cancer. Because what they've done, <clears throat> they've changed the structure of the oil. So let's say they're going to make monitoring out of this oil. Well, we've got a problem. It's electric and they want it to be solid. So they saturate it with hydrogen ions. And when they saturate it with hydrogen ions, they cause this hydrogen atom to flip over to the other side. And when that hydrogen atom flips over to the other side, we've now lost our double bond, which means the liquid is now a solid. If it was a polyunsaturated margarine, when you opened the lid, it would be liquid. Because every polyunsaturated oil is liquid. So if you say, well, why do you say it's a polyunsaturated margarine if you saturate it with hydrogen ions? Because that's what they do, they saturate it to make it solid. You know what the answer is? Well, it was polyunsaturated before we saturated it. <laughs> See the tricky advertising? Mm -hmm. 
Can you cook in coconut oil since it's saturated? I mean, is it safe? We're getting there. What are you making, students? What would be the best flow of the coconut? Coconut? Why? It's saturated. Because it's got no energy spots. In fact, coconut oil gives all your saturated fats. This is butter, this is shea butter, this is palm oil, this is coconut oil. They are heat resistant, light resistant, and oxygen resistant. They are the most stable oils because they're saturated fats. And saturated fat does not cause heart disease. If it did, when Captain Cook landed on the South Pacific Islands, he'd be confronted He'd be confronted with people dying from heart attacks and strokes all over the island. Is that true? Well, we didn't find that at all. In fact, there was no strokes. There was no heart disease. And they eat coconut oil every single <clears throat> So you see, history tells us that, nah, saturated fat does not cause heart disease, yeah? Where does the avocado oil fit? Um, now, what I've done here, where's that avocado oil fit? I just put the highest sources in one of these. In his book, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, Udo Erasmus, he gives a page where he puts all the seeds, all the nuts, and all the, the fat foods, and he shows that they are all really a combination of all that. So avocado oil has a little bit of saturated, but probably mostly mild saturated. Not good for cooking. Uh, ideally not. Ideally, put it in at the end. Yes? Uh, is palm oil healthy? Palm oil is a saturated fat. Now, the issue with palm oil is not nutritionally, it's the same as coconut. But it's an ethical issue for palm oil because they're, they're cutting down the rainforest to grow palm trees to make palm oil so that the Westerners can have their chocolate because. Coconut is a saturated fat, but the flavour only takes the chocolate. They prefer to use the palm oil for the chocolate, so that's more an ethical issue. And I know sometimes you can buy a chocolate and it'll actually have on the back, this is, this is the ethical trees, if you notice that. Is coconut oil an omega-3 now, or what, what kind of an omega, is it that, not sure? It's none. It's, none. it's a saturated fat. So it's not. It's a saturated fat. So we that's why I say which oil is the best or which body function are you talking about? Because the body uses the oil of them. That's why a variety, what is what's the old saying? Variety is the spice of life. So with the omega-3 cascade that I just showed you, the fish eats ALA. In the fish, ALA is converted to EPA. In the fish, EPA is converted to DHA. Man extracts the DHA out of the fish and says, oh, this is fast for period. This is fast for period. It's already ready for you. But if three double wellness, is sensitive to light, heat, and oxygen, how sensitive is six? They would have to extract that with no exposure to light, heat, and oxygen. Is that possible, I ask? And the fish that are the highest in this DHA are the highest in mercury and dioxins. So one lady told me that her daughter was a um, athlete. She was only 12, but she was different. And she started to give her fish oil capsules. She said she started showing neurological problems. She was having trouble with school. So they had her tested and the doctor said, she's got some mercury poisoning there. What have you done? They said, no, it be poisoning, but we're vegetarians. And they traced it to the fish oil. Yeah. And it, she said, but it said it's been tested. Well, I'm sorry, but not even want to take the truth for that. It's like polyunsaturated margarine. Oh, yeah, it was before they saturated. <laughs> and what about sugar-free juice? Well, in a good year, it is. But in a bad year, when the rains didn't come at the right time, and that, that affect the sweetness, by law they can put sugar into it and say, sugar free? And if you ask them, they'll say, well, there's no added sugar after we got it to the desired sweetness of the good year. Easy, have to. have to be very carefully on, on some of the uh, advertising terms. 
because these terms make people think it's like uh, high fructose corn syrup. People look, oh, corn's good. Um, fruit, fructose, fruit, fruit's good. Can you see that? <laughs> so you have to be careful of those words. Those, those words. I said to one of our maintenance man was in town. I need a dolly work. And he came back. He was really proud of himself. Pure. Look, pure. It was not. It was not. It was not extra virgin. It was heat extracted, but he was very proud of himself because he saw the word pure. Be careful of that word pure. <coughs> yeah? Um, I have a question about urethral alcohol. Is that kind of the same as far as the sugar to stay away from? Uh, yeah, I guess you'd have to have a look at the amount and where it is and what it is in. I, I was very thankful that when I lived in Mother Rain for us and the children a little, my first husband was a drug addict and an alcohol for a lot of marijuana. It didn't happen overnight, but I'm telling you this because that's where I started. I started in the rainforest and everything we ate, I made, because we didn't have more money. <laughs> and, and I learned, I learned how to make things, I learned how to grow things, and it was, it was great training. And so still now, even though I'm not in the rainforest, well, I'm in a, I'm in a nice, secluded area, we've got 450 acres and we're one and a half hours from the coast on the east coast of Australia. You've heard of the Great Dividing Range? It's a range that follows the east coast of Australia. Well, we're just into the Great Dividing Range. I don't make everything I eat, but I make a lot of what I eat. I know, I know there are a lot of shortcuts. And um, my, I was with my daughter and a graphic designer last night because we're about to do a reprinting of my book. And we made, so the book that you've got, we've done some adjustments to make it more to American. So people say, what's DST? You've probably seen that in the recipe books if you've gone there. That's just two teaspoons. So the new print will have those, those adjustments to American things. So the saturated fat is heat resistant, light resistant, and oxygen resistant. So let's recap on what we looked at yesterday, the gastrointestinal tract, and let's have a look at what happens with the different fats. So this is the liver, that's the stomach, and remember underneath is the gallbladder coming down into the neck of the pancreas. And I'd like to have a look at what the gut does with these different oils. Lining the gastrointestinal tract, as we looked at, is villi. And up the middle of the villi is a lactea. Now that's part of our lymphatic system. Remember we touched on the lymphatic system, how the, the tonsils are the only part of the lymphatic system that throws waste straight out. And I've got a nice red today. So, <coughs> to show you the blood system through the, through the villi. And remember, as we looked at yesterday, anything that goes into our gastrointestinal tract is not part of us till it gets into the blood. So let's look at the three long chain fatty acids. When these fats come into the body, they're not broken down in the mouth, they're not broken down in the stomach, they come down into the duodenum, <coughs> bile from the gallbladder, breaks them down to tiny particles. Pancreatic lipase further breaks them down and then they are absorbed not into the blood but into the lactea, straight into the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. The lymphatic system takes these poly and monounsaturated fats to the thymus, then to the liver, and the liver says, ah, the surgeons have arrived, store them. So the body prefers to store these omega fats because it uses them for so many different functions, especially cell membrane and repair. That's why if an athlete is having a smoothie for breakfast before he goes out and does his morning training, well, ideally, he has that an hour or half before he starts training. <coughs> yes, coconut, because the body burns that, as we'll see, but always have some omega-3, remember, for cell and membrane function and repair. And as you begin to implement your exercise program, 
and it's a good idea to always have the omega-3 because as you begin to exercise, your muscles will tear and restructure to become stronger. That's the pain that you get when you have the next day after you've exercised. So you need the omega-3s for that cellular rate function and repair. So that's the three long-chain fatty acids. So totally different with the saturated fats. Underneath the tongue, there's a sublingual gland releasing lingual lipase. Lingual lipase breaks down short-chain fatty acids. So that's what's happening with the coconut. Comes into the stomach, it's already having its breakdown. It comes into the duodenum, it does not need bile, does not need pancreatic lipase, and then it gets absorbed not into the lacteal, the saturated fat gets absorbed straight into the blood. That is a totally different process. And then it gets taken to the liver, and the liver burns it as fuel. The body loves, in fact, it prefers to burn the saturated fat as fuel. That's why the athlete puts some coconut milk, some coconut oil into that smoothie in the morning, and that will give you a great burning, burning fuel, that saturated fat. Let me give you an illustration. An Australian farmer got some coconuts cheap. You see, at the top of Australia, there's our tropics. So that's where coconuts grow, up the top. We're the opposite to you guys. Further down you go, warmer. Further up you go, colder. Opposite is Australia, we're southern hemisphere. So down the bottom of Australia, cold. Up the top of Australia, hot. So in the northern part of Australia, coconuts. He got a whole lot of coconuts cheap. He cracked them open, gave them to his cows. He wanted to fatten up his cows. But what happened to the cows? They lost fat, put on muscle, and started bounding around the paddocks. <laughs> so if you want to lose fat, put on muscle, and start bounding around the place, what do you eat? Coconut. If you wanted to lose weight, would you eat an oil that the body stir stored or an oil that the body burned? Burned. What do you eat if you want to lose weight? Okay, it's hard to say, isn't it? We've been so brainwashed. So brainwashed. So when Captain Cook landed on the South Pacific Islands, he was confronted with the most magnificent specimens of humanity he'd seen. The men were tall, strong, muscular, agile. The women were beautiful. Had a lot of trouble with your neck. They were so beautiful. <laughs> Why did they eat every meal? No, no special skin creams because of what they were eating that came out on the skin. And the white man said, stop eating the coconut, it will give you heart disease, it will give you diabetes, cancer, and they all said, what's that? Mm. How much sense does that make? But the white man bought five lethal whites. He bought white rice, white flour, white sugar, white refined salt and white cow's milk. What did I call them? Five lethal whites. They stopped the valuable white, the coconut, and they went over the five lethal whites and they're doing their job. They're doing their job. In fact, those island people are so sick now. Diabetes is out of control. It's all out of control because they stopped the coconut. Now, the white man brought some incredible reforms, they were involved in some, some very cruel spiritual practices, even cannibalism, so desperately Christianity freed them from this. But they could have taught the white man how to eat. <laughs> but because of the reforms they brought in, they just presumed, well, the white man must also now to, know how to eat, but not, sorry, unfortunately not true, not true. So every year I go to the South Pacific Islands. I haven't been for a few years because of a certain thing that happened on the planet and shut everything down. But I'm going in December and I love going because, and they keep getting me back because I'm the only white teacher that teaches this, that teaches them to go back to the coconut. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bruce Fife, F-I-F-E. Dr. Bruce Five. He's written many books on the wonders of the coconut oil. I really think he should be receiving a Nobel Prize because he's really opened eyes on the value of the coconut oil. It's a remarkable oil. 
It's the most stable oil, being a saturated fat, and it has it has some fatty acids in there that are antifungal, antimicrobial. Yes. So does the coconut oil have to also be cold pressed? The coconut oil doesn't have to be cold pressed. What about organic coconut oil versus non-organic? Well, they don't spray coconuts, so in the growing process, you know, they're not. They're not sprayed, but it often refers to the extraction process. And when you think about it, it is the coconut and the olive oil that have been eaten for centuries, because they're the only two oils that are extracted from the flesh of the plant. How do you use coconut oil? How do I use coconut oil? Uh, I oil ball with it most mornings. If I'm home, I I do. A bit hard to travel with coconut oil. But if I'm able, I oil pull. We talked about the oil pulling. And we also use it in, uh, in some very delicious desserts. I have a very beautiful sister in law. She's the top model. Her name's Abigail O'Neill. So you can Google Abigail O'Neill and look at my very beautiful sister in law. And she's written a book called Model Chocolate. And the whole book has got many pictures of the beautiful Abigail in there. She's a very good illustration that genetics loves the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. There certainly is some genetics there, but she lives this life. She's 48 now. She goes on to a job site, and they think she's 28. She's a very beautiful girl, but she's written a book model chocolate because she lives this life. And this book has got many recipes on uh, little delicacies, little chocolates and slices and you call them bars, is that right? And also desserts and smoothies and breakfast. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. And she uses a lot of coconut oil, a lot of shade like palm oil. But you can you can Google um, vegan cheesecakes and there's some delicious recipes there, and they always use the coconut oil. So the question is how do we use it? We use it in, in some desserts. We usually do dessert maybe twice a week. If someone has a birthday, we do a little, a little something. And we usually on the last, well, our guests go home Sunday morning, so every Saturday lunch we serve a dessert. Yes? How about MCT oil? MCT oil, this is from the marijuana. No, it's from the coconut. I'm sorry, we didn't change fatty acids. I'm thinking mm -hmm. of the CBC. Huh. CBC. So the, the um, yeah, well. Because it's liquid, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I always like to go to the basic source, mm -hmm. and that is the, the coconut. So my suggestion is, for free oils, use either the coconut or the olive. Personally, I prefer the taste of olive. And the coconut oil we used probably in desserts, but we had a Fijian cook once and he laughed using the coconut oil. What I find is when it's heated, the, you know, in the dishes, you can't taste it very much. So if you do want to saute your garlic and your onion in a little bit of oil, the coconut is the direct acid. But we should be getting our polyunsaturated fats from the food that we eat. It wasn't until probably about 19, 1920s, uh, the Industrial Revolution, when they started to develop equipment to be able to extract oil out of hard seeds. And they used chemical and high heat equipment. So what's that high heat equipment going to do to the double bonds when they extract the oils? This is going to destroy them. So when you see those oils in plastic bottles in the supermarket, peanut oil, soy oil, corn oil, safflor oil, don't touch them. They're in plastic and they're in clear. Well, it doesn't matter because they're already totally destroyed. And did you know that that's when heart disease began? Was when those altered oils came onto the market. So we should be getting our polyunsaturated fats from our food and, if, and the free oil is either olive or coconut oil. So let's have a look at plant earth. And you will find in the middle is the equator. That's where you guys are up here. Australia is down here. And you'll find on the equator which 
which oil is used predominantly on the equator? The coconut. That's where it grows. And it's the perfect oil for that environment. That saturated fat is the perfect for those hot, hot climate because it's heat resistant, light resistant, oxygen resistant, and it contains antifungal properties. Mm. So caprylic acid is antifungal, capri acid, it's antifungal, antimicrobial, lauric <coughs> acid. 48% lauric acid, a very strong antifungal, antimicrobial. And that's why it's such a good oil to oil with. And that's also if someone has um, fractured gums, the coconut oil is excellent. So there's that antifungal and antibacterial property in it. <coughs> Sorry, I'm feeling, I mean, <laughs> I didn't want to sneeze right into your ear gums. <laughs> So if we go up the planet, there we find the Mediterranean. So what oils are grown in the Mediterranean? Oh, oh, oh. Fish oils in the islands. And if you go further up the planet, these plants are higher in six, right up the top they're higher in three. You know Erasmus in his book Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, he quotes a study where they took a species of plant grown in the Mediterranean, high in omega-9. Same species of plant grown further up, higher in omega-6. Same species of plant grown right up the top of the planet, higher in omega-3. So an illustration that we should be eating the food that is grown in our area predominantly. Udo Rassens also quoted a man who went to live with the Eskimos and he didn't eat their diet. By the way, what do they eat traditionally? Don't know about now, traditionally. Uh, fish, seal, uh, even some whale, blubber. What's all that really high in? Omega-3. Why? Because coming right down the food chain again, the little fish are eating the, the algae, the seaweed that are high, and then the next is eating the fish. And then you get so it goes down. And, and of course, the whales are eating the, the plankton and the algae, so there's again omega 3. But this man, he was on the sand diet. Have you heard of the sand diet? Standard American diet. Standard American diet is almost totally deficient in the omega 3s and the omega 6s. So he took his sand diet up to live with the Eskimos, and within a couple of months, he was getting depressed, even suicidal, and they had to get him out. But traditionally, the Eskimos don't. And that's what Dr. Neil Levy shows that he's called depression way up. And also, uh, Udo Rasmus shows in his book, Fast and Heal, Fast and Kill, how important these omega 3s are in brain function. Because our brain is an electrical system, so this electromagnetic field that's created in the double bonds that ensures correct electrical activity from cell to cell, because it's an electrical system. So in the past 20 years, they have documented a disease that's spreading through the northern countries. It's called a sad disease, and it's seasonal affective disorder. And they're blaming lack of sun. Do you know there's never been sun? But what the people are reading today is they're not eating their traditional diet. They're not eating the foods that are grown in that area, which are much higher in the omega-3 and 6. They're eating the sand diet. The sand diet causes the sand disease, which is the standard American diet. Again, almost totally deficient in these omegas. So God designed us to have a variety. And that variety in diet allows us to be taking in a very nice selection of these fats. So I'd like to go one step further now and I want to show you how the coconut oil is being used now medicinally. In his book, Bruce Fife's two books on the line, one is called Stop Autism Now, one is called Stop Alzheimer's Now. And in both books, about the third chapter, it's called The Ketone Miracle. And he shows that in the 1920s, there were doctors who were fasting their epileptic patients. 
in a way to overcome their seizures. So when we fast, what do we do on? Our fat cells. And the liver converts that fat to ketones. And what they discovered was that ketones are neurohealers. Ketones are neurohealers, they are also neuroprotectors. But you've got to eat. So they came up with a diet that mimicked fasting in the body, and it was called the ketogenic diet. You've heard of the ketogenic diet? Mm -hmm. The ketogenic diet is a diet that basically is, it must be high fibre because if it's not high fibre, the colon stops. So they recognise the importance of that. Generous, generous proteins. And proteins, of course, are much lower in carbohydrates. So your meat protein has no carbohydrates, but your plant proteins, which are found in your legumes, nuts and seeds, it's very low carbohydrate. And generous fat. So what would be a ketogenic diet? What would be a ketogenic breakfast? So a ketogenic breakfast would be four eggs, four rashes of bacon, and a quarter pound of butter. So it's very hard to eat that. Very hard to eat that. So Bruce Five, he comes along with the coconut ketogenic diet. And the coconut ketogenic diet is, yes, high fiber, generous proteins, and supplementing with the coconut. And because of the medium chain fatty acids that are in the coconut, the liver loves converting, this is the medium chain fatty acids, the, the, the liver loves converting those medium chain fatty acids to ketones. And ketones are the ones that are neurohealers, neuroprotectors. They actually found on the ketogenic diet that sometimes up to 90% the seizures stop. Mm. Now there's a movie you can watch. It was made in the 1990s, Meryl Streep accident. It's called First Do No Harm. That's the name of the movie. First Do No Harm is the first phrase in the Hippocratic Oath that the doctors take. First Do No Harm. That's why the yes. called First Do No Harm. It's a true story. It's a story about a little nine-year-old boy who started seizures. They put him on one medication, started to jump off the roof. So they changed medication, he just turned him into a zombie, and then one night he was having a seizure in the hospital, and the doctor asked for a medication that they were going to um, inject you know, through a syringe, not with a legal anally, because it's the only way they could get the medicine into him. The nurse was running with the medicine in a polystyrofoam cup, and the whole thing dropped because the medication ate through the holy story from the car. Mm -hmm. And so Meryl Strip, the mother, she's looking at this. So that night she tries to take her son out of the hospital and she was not allowed. <laughs> so she went to the library as she did in the 90s and she found the ketogenic diet. And she said to the doctor, I want to take my son to the John Huntley Hospital to try the ketogenic diet. You know what the doctor said? Oh, this is very dangerous. What could be more dangerous than that medication? No, put in the child. And they were talking about cutting the top of his skull off to do more tests. Mm -hmm. What's dangerous? You know, we've forgotten what dangerous is. Mm -hmm. It's like the man when I told him he had was about to have a triple bypass. And he rang me up, he said, I've been told you might help. I said, Jenny, you've got to stop the alcohol and the caffeine and the meat and start to eat plant based, you've got to start exercising. He said, Oh, that's a bit extreme, Ma. <laughs> I'll tell you what extreme is, he's cutting the chest open with a saw, ripping an artery out of the knee, behind the knee, and sewing it into a bone. That's extreme. <laughs> I reckon we've lost, we've lost the conception of what is extreme. Remember what God said in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7? I've not given you the spirit of fear. Now, how many do that through fear? But of power, love, and a sound mind. You know what a sound mind does? It considers these things. 
he ended up going and having a bypass so he could still drink his coffee and he's very blind and do all the things that he shouldn't have done. I think he lasted another year. That's a pity. He died before he, he reached 60. I think that if he done my so-called extreme way, he might be still alive today. But you know, God is a government of freedom, and freedom is based on free choice. But every choice that we make should be made according to information. And so back to the story, so uh, first do no harm. She ended up being able to take him to the hospital, as she had to have a doctor to fly with her, and they found a friend who was a doctor. And when they went into the hospital, you know what the doctor then did? Took him off all his medication immediately to stop the meds. And then the nutritionist showed him a breakfast to eat. And the nutritionist, she looks like she's about 90 with a white coat on. She is the nutritionist in John Hardy Hospital. And you know what his meal was? It was sliced tomato, uh, sliced avocado, some spinach, uh, and a couple of eggs. Now that's a little bit more attainable. So what would you do on a vegetarian diet if you're doing the plant-based keto diet? Breakfast would be a bowl of lentils. <coughs> Remember, they're much lower carbs. Bowl of lentils, sliced tomato, maybe spinach, maybe an avocado, uh, maybe a handful of nuts, eight to ten nuts, and then what Dr. Bruce Fife suggests is a teaspoon of coconut oil with every meal. And then when you can handle that, even build up to four teaspoons three times a day. And that higher fat especially the meat in chain fatty acid, it kicks the body into ketosis. And remember what ketones do? They're neuroprotectors, they're neurohealers. So the fat actually protects the nerve cells. Yeah, is it important to understand fruit combining, or that's not? That's the only the thing we don't combine is fruits and vegetables together. Huh. As a rule, someone with strong stomach can handle them because fruit are high in fiber, high in minerals, Sorry, fruit are high in fiber and lower in minerals, high in sugars. Whereas vegetables, high in fiber, high in minerals, low in sugars. So what about smoothies? What about green smoothies where a person puts fruit in and leaves in? Leaves that can fit and serve herbs. So the leaves can go either way. Probably what doesn't combine is a bunch of grains with broccoli. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't sound too good, does it? So we usually have fruit at one meal and vegetables at another meal. Well, like, what about certain foods that kind of create flatulence and it's kind of embarrassing you want to try to minimize that? Is there tricks to the tip? Well, uh, the main food that provides flatulence is wheat because of the change structure. It's very difficult for the gut to break down. So that's really the main one. Remember what we looked at, you say not chewy properly. <coughs> I gave the my husband. He does everything very, very fast. I'm going to slow him down. Slow him down. Does this diet, does it help with other things besides seizures, like neurohealers, like say, like ADHD? Could you do this diet for... So let me explain. Stop autism now is about all childhood neurodegeneration. So all neurodegeneration and neuron is a nerve cell. So any damage to nerve cells, this helps, because that's what the neuron, that's the neuro is a nerve cell. And so in his book, um, Stop Autism Now, he's covering attention deficit syndrome, he's covering hyperactivity, he's covering autism, he's covering uh, seizures, whereas Stop Alzheimer's Now, he's looking at all adult neurodegeneration. So he, covers uh, multiple sclerosis, Huntington's Korea, Parkinson's disease, dementia, Alzheimer's, so it covers all of that, and with both of them, of course, epilepsy and species. So then one thinks, well, why don't they try the ketogenic diet first, before, before the medication? Because if the ketogenic diet doesn't work, guess what? You've lost something. Something very interesting. No one on the ketogenic diet has heart attacks or strokes. 
And if saturated fat causes heart disease, wouldn't they be dying like flies? So another reason that the fat causing heart disease it is actually not not true. Yeah. Oxalates. 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 Well, oxalates are only a problem if if a uh, person drinking a lot lot of coffee and they're having a high meat diet, so it's sort of pick for that a little more acidity. And in raw uh, greens, um, the oxalic acid is an in an organic form, easily used, but when it's cooked, it becomes inorganic. So you can have the raw greens every day and maybe cook three months of it, or like greens once a day. It's only when really it's overloaded and there are other things that are the particular scars of the problem that the problem is. Yes. How are you getting that and how could it out and if you're taking like four times a day? How are you taking it? Well, some people are happily eat it off the spoon. I'm not fussed on eating it like that. <laughs> and we uh, it's very nice in the uh, desserts. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a young guy and he was 19, he had a brain tumor, so we wanted him to have the coconut, but he couldn't handle it on the spoon. So our chef became creative and made a healthy chocolate. So I think he got the milk of the coconut on it, I think he put tahini in it to make it a bit creamy, um, put some carrot powder in it, maybe a little bit of um, cacao to give it that little bit of bitterness. And, uh, sky's the limit, a couple of drops of peppermint oil, and then he poured it into a tray. And so the, the young man happily ate a few pieces of healthy chocolate every meal. So necessity is a mother of the invention. You probably heard that. that that's the whole way to do it. We didn't put any sweetening in because he had a brain tumor and we wanted to get the, the glucose down, as you will see in the next lecture when we look at cancer. But I think time is up. It is. When we come back at 10.30, we're going to look at cancer.